Tonight, we've got a very simple agenda. Adam's going to be presenting an amazing topic on running your own tabletop exercise for your organization for incident response, um, which dovetails nicely from last month's ISSA meeting where Mike walked us through the back doors and breaches, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, I'm Adam. And Adam on uh, the, the Slack channel, and uh, I'm a security analyst for a small company here in Greenville. Uh, the next topic, uh, conducting an incident response tabletop exercise. Um, disclaimer, because there's always a disclaimer, uh, this presentation was put together in my personal time. Its contents are neither sponsored nor affiliated with my own or any respective institution or company. Um, and just a little note, if you like a white background with black text, I uh, hope you enjoy it. Spent a lot of time on this. All right. Uh, before we get started, why did the PowerPoint presentation cross the road? Anyone? Uh, to get the other slide. Yeah, okay. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, tonight's agenda, um, we're going to go over uh, the moving pieces of a tabletop, um, what it is, um, why you need to do one. Uh, I finished it with an example that we can actually run through so um, you can actually see it in action. Um, my objective for you guys uh, for this presentation is for all of you to go back to work tomorrow, tell your organization why it's uh, so vitally important uh, for you guys to hold the tabletop exercise, and uh, that you know just the right person that can do it for them, which is you. Um, so, I'm going to, you know, we're going to go over all the components of, of it. I'm going to show you an example, and I got a bunch of resources, so there's no excuse not to uh, go, go to you know whoever you need to go to and say, hey, maybe let, let's do this. Um, so um, we'll jump right into it. Um, what is a tabletop exercise? Um, it's a simulated threat exercise in which participants gather to discuss an incident scenario. Um, kind of all encompassing that that's what it is. Um, um, provides you with a valuable valuable way to test your crisis response plan or incident response plan. Um, have the option to test your entire plan or just a portion. So, you know, you can kind of pick and choose depending on what your, your objective is. Um, uh, you can announce in advance, uh, to build knowledge, um, and experience. So, you know, if you say ahead of time, like, hey, you know, we're going to be doing a tabletop exercise. Um, and, you know, here's, here's kind of what we hope to get out of it. You can certainly do that. Uh, the other option is to, uh, do it unannounced, which you bring in your skill teams for, let's say, all, you know, all the security guys or, uh, might be HR or legal, depending on your focus, um, and and that assesses their their readiness. So um, each one provides excellent benefits. Um, uh, and also allows you to uh, practice your plan, um, which provides you with a, a smoother execution uh, when needed. Um, something to go with that last one too is um, if you don't have a plan, uh, if you don't have it written down, you simply do not have a plan. So uh, keep that in mind, um, and if you find out that your organization does have a plan. Um, I got one here that you can start with. So um, uh, now onto the why. Why conduct one? Um, it's, it's to become more comfortable with, the, with your incident response plan, um, improve your communication between your, your team members, especially if it's um, you know, between your IT team, security team, um, your, your HR team, your legal, your PR, if you have uh, those in-house. Uh, you learn new ways to execute your plan. Uh, simply just by going through it, you'll you'll discover new opportunities to improve it. Um, and also identify gaps in your 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 tools, skill sets. You know, of course, the plan itself. Um, you know, that can be your policies, um, or plans, um, and and your playbooks. Um, moving on, um, the process. Uh, so this is what we're going to be going over. Um, I, I don't have to read it verbatim. Um, uh, we're going to set objectives, select your scenario. Um, you select people to facilitate, participate, and observe it. Um, you go on to conducting the actual exercise. You end that with a uh, what's called a hot wash. Um, uh, after the hot wash, you take all the information gathered, you put together an after action report, and you follow that up with your actual actions or remediations. Um, so that's kind of the format. And uh, the next uh, slide is we're going to touch on each one of those. Um, so to set your, your objective, this is our starting point. Um, without a clear objective, the exercise won't be meaningful. Um, the scenario should solicit responses related to the objectives, so the outcomes result in a list of activities that will improve the incident response process. It's another way of saying, um, you, you know, uh, you set your objective, uh, which you know, we're going to go over some uh, examples, but then you know, choose your audience based on that, um, and choose your scenario. So, so all the conversation uh, provides you know a, a, me a meaningful end result that that could allow you to. Um, you know, make improvements on whatever your, your objective is. Again, we'll, we'll go over some, some of the options on what, um, objectives and outcomes, um, uh, what, what some of the possibilities are. Um, so in doing so, you can determine the effectiveness of, again, PANS policies or procedures. Um, 
determine the effectiveness of the instant response plan itself, which is uh, something that I did recently that was kind of our objective. Um, uh, the ad uh, adequacy of tools and resources, um, again, identifying gaps on maybe, you know, some discovery methods or ways to you know, detect, let's say, uh, in indicator of compromise or, um, you know, escalation paths. Um, and also provide some uh, training opportunities. Um, so going through a particular scenario, you know, you can say, hey, you know, we don't really have anyone in house that would even know how to approach this or handle this. Um, and it's a really good way to identify those. So um, uh, these are some examples of uh, some objectives. Um, I got those. Uh, there's a, um, and I'll actually share all this with you, all, with you guys as well, but there's a, a PDF from Miter, um, uh called the Cyber Exercise Playbook. It's just a screenshot of a, of a couple objectives that you can set, um, along with uh, some of the outcomes. Um, so you can that kind of mix and match these up. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll actually kind of go over the, the an example tabletop um, exercise that we have after um, this introduction. Uh, but definitely take a look at that if you're looking to put them uh, put them together for your for your own company. Um, scenario selection. <laughs> um, one of the questions that you can ask. Uh, is what, what are the biggest risks to your organizations today? Um, this makes it realistic, engaging, aligns to your objectives. Again, so it's useful. Um, and those are some examples. You can kind of go over efficient tech, uh, new malware, um, un un unauthorized access, um, ransom, or just general suspicious activities. And then kind of go through the motion of, of how do you detect that. Um, this is a, uh, as, as, as far as coming up with scenarios, um, it's really, on a, a Twitter account called Bad Things Daily um, that will post just that. They, they kind of give you little nuggets of scenarios that, that you guys can talk about. Um, these are really fun, especially if you don't want to do a full fledged tabletop exercise. This is something you can do with your team. So, you know, whether it be, you know, a group of security guys or system admins, they can kind of take a look at this, let's say, at, 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 at like a daily stand up and just kind of briefly talk about, like, hey, you know, do we have resources to, um, you know, go through this particular scenario? What would we do? Um, so that's a, that's a, also a fun one to get some ideas on, um, on, on your topic. Um, selecting your audience. I, I, I kind of split these into two main groups, which is your IT and non-IT IT, um, members. Um, you know, they, they all should be a part of your incident response team, which again, should be documented somewhere. Um, but, uh, you know, your non-IT typically includes HR, legal, uh, PR, C-level, like your CTO, CSOs, you know, because they would probably be involved in, uh, some kind of incident response, uh, if it was a real one. Um, but again, these are all members that should be in your incident, uh, uh, response communicate or, or your incident, um, uh, communication plan rather. Um, holding a separate exercise for each group ties back to having a, a focused objective, um, relevancy to the participants and, uh, time considerations. Um, roles, these are the roles, uh, for the exercise itself, uh, the, the facilitator. Uh, would be the person that's uh, leading the exercise, uh, provides index to refocus the conversation and, and broaden the conversation. Um, this is another way of saying that his goal is to, to keep people talking. You know, he'll deliver the scenario, and if, if anything kind of looks like it's going off track or stagnant, um, he'll he'll kind of he'll ask more more questions to dig in to facilitate more conversations. That, that's the, the the goal of the actual exercise to get people talking. Uh, participants, uh, those are. The people that are likely to respond to the actual uh, threat should it occur, um, uh, you know, again, relevant to the scenario objectives and optionally um, heavily impacted by the scenario to provide needed input. That means, let's say you're going over a scenario that would affect, um, like, the sales department. Um, well, that sales department, you probably the manager of that department would 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 have the best insight into certain um, uh, processes. Or resources that, if interrupted, would cause a pretty big impact. Um, you know, and, and this is something that you can also find from a business impact analysis if your company has ever done one. But they can provide some really good input as far as a scenario that maybe someone purely technical wouldn't consider. So, um, those, those are great people to have. Um, if if you know your your objective kind of is kind of built around that. <clears throat> and lastly, the scribe. Uh, the scribe is someone that. Simply listens, takes notes from the exercise, um, because that information gathered will be used in the after action report. Um, uh, and then next step is actually conducting the exercise. Um, this is again, it's a conversation and participation based exercise, uh, well suited for uh, an in person environment. Um, I say that because um, the one that um, I was a part of, 
you know, everything was, was done online. And we encourage use of cameras because if I'm looking at Ben, I'm going to talk to Ben. Ben's going to be engaged. He's going to respond. And, you know, it's going to facilitate more conversation. And you guys know if you're, you know, on Zoom meetings, you turn off the camera and you kind of like, you know, so if you can in person, um, the major role of the facilitator, again, is to keep the conversation moving. Um, and I mentioned, you know, when stagnant, you know, the injects will help, um, you know, expand the scenario to encourage further uh, discussion or, or touch on topics that maybe, um, on their own, they're not really considering. Um, something that you want to do is make sure that all the, all your materials are ready. So for all the participants, uh, you know, I sent this out ahead of time. I gave them the incident response plan. Um, we got a separate communication plan, uh, any playbooks, which is, you know, in our cases for the IT team, um, any relevant policies. So going through the scenario, these are actual tools that they would, they would actually be using real time, uh, to kind of, you know, help, uh, you know, progress. Um, along an incident. Um, as far as time, you can always be mindful of time and schedules. This is why we don't invite absolutely everyone. You know, the whole company is sitting in the room for two hours. Um, uh, the one that I did was about two hours long and that seemed to be a pretty good, uh, a, a pretty good time uh, to kind of go through the entire exercise and, and have some really good discussion. Um, the, uh, the format, um, this is during the exercise, is um, the facilitator presents a scenario. Uh, you have a group discussion and you come back to a checkpoint. Uh, the, the checkpoints are, are recaps of the facts up to that point in your scenario. Um, and it's a point to uh, ask additional questions. Um, you know, it, it's really to, to stop and say, okay, what are the, what are the facts? What, what do we know? Because you know, depending on the scenario, it can look like, it, it can look like five different th possibilities as far as what's causing, um, uh, like, let's say a symptom on the network. Um, so, and of course, we'll see this in the upcoming example. So, um, yeah, you follow along with this and, and it kind of guides you along and progress. It keeps things moving, uh, throughout the tabletop. Um, and, uh, debriefing, debriefing the hot wash. It's not hog wash, hot wash. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something I had to look up. Uh, is, uh, it's, it's not intended to critique, uh, great people, you know, that they did good, they did the bad. Rather, it highlights, uh, you know, strengths that should be sustained, um, in your instant response plan. Um, uh, and opportunities for improvement. Um, this should be, again, done immediately following the exercise, uh, with participants, uh, participants so present. Um, and it really, you, you touched on three, three different things. Uh, what worked well, what didn't work well, um, how can we improve? Um, and of course, that's all documented and later used in the after action report. Um, so the after action report, this is where you synthesize all the information grade, uh, gained from the exercise. Um, you have a summary of the exercise and uh, uh, objectives. Um, you had the uh, recommendations from the debrief and evaluations, um, you know, aka the, the, the hot wash, um, where, you, where you put down the areas that um, uh, need an improvement, uh, identify the strengths, um, and then actual action, uh, action steps. Again, this is why we actually conducted um, uh, the action steps. Is where we review the uh, recommendations, um, identify uh, the responsible departments or staff, uh, and develop an action plan with the timelines for remediation. So, um, again, uh, once you complete, you know, you guys, you, you talk about what what went well, what didn't go well, and things that didn't go well, um, it, it gets injected into this after action report, which is kind of like an executive summary that you know you deliver to you know, your, your your boss, your CTO, um, to you know any any stakeholders that are interested. Um, and it, it kind of gives you a roadmap on, on, okay, now that we did this, then what? So, so more, one of the most important pieces, um, kind of like, I guess, in the pen test, this is your, your report that says, you know, here's, here's what, uh, you know, your, your weaknesses and, and here's some steps to fix that. And then you want to follow up on it. Um, so some resources, um, we'll actually look back to this, um, at the end. So I've read this slide. We're actually going to see, um, an actual tabletop. Uh, exercise. We'll go through it. You guys are welcome to participate as if you guys are members of the incident response team, um, or just listen along. Um, but um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on these. But um, these, what are they? Five different um, resources. You can pretty much pull them together, start to finish. Um, I, I use some of it. It was kind of a hodgepodge of <laughs> that the one I did, but it went extremely well. Um, I can tell you that there is no like one way to do a tabletop at all. Um, so you know. Really tailored for, for, you know, your, your business, um, you know, your particular objectives. Um, uh, don't be afraid to do one at all. Um, 
So uh, we'll actually go through a tabletop and um, again participate if you want. You know, maybe I'll ask some questions. You can kind of um, you know put in some of your inputs. Um, this is just a, a general. Um, you see the participants. Can you recognize some of those names? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a, yeah. I was trying to find like a kind of a non-descriptive general logo, but uh, it's that kept on coming up. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So um, I'm not going to read this verbatim, uh, but this is something that that um, as as an audience, especially for first time uh, participants um, in a tabletop, um, you know, this is where I, I I define what a tabletop is, what it is, what it isn't. Um, you know, it's not a live fire exercise. So we're not like actually. Um, you know, we talked about um, uh, the the red canary tool, which I played with, and I stopped playing with. <laughs> um, but that, that's where that came from. Uh, the search for because it'd be kind of neat to do a, a live fire version of this, which we certainly can do. Um, so you know, for this purpose, you know, um, you know, I said it wasn't that just a discussion. Uh, I defined some of the uh, the roles uh, in this case, moderator versus participant roles. Um, and uh, kind of give you an idea of why you would um, uh, hold a tabletop exercise, which again, is, you want to kind of go through it before and it and isn't actually occurs. Um, uh, this one uh, touches on you know why you would um, have one in general, which is uh, you know it, I actually took this from another DEF CON tabletop talk. I think because I loved it, um, but it actually holds true with instant response. You may have the best plan out there. All your playbooks set up and everything, um, but if you don't test them, then the first time uh, you have an incident that gets all thrown out the window and it just doesn't work. Um, you know, people go off on their own and the plan falls apart. So, um, you know, that that's that's, that's, a, that's a big reason why and the value of doing these tabletops. Um, it'll save time, it'll save money. Um, so, so definitely do one. Um, you know, this slide is just a uh, you know defining. Uh, in, in in our case, you know, we have. Um, different different courses depending if um, you know, we define something as an incident versus a breach, right? You get you involved with different people to a certain point, um, and, and, and uh, the escalation paths are completely different. So, of course, breach being anything with PII, once you hit that 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 switch, um, it, it, it engages uh, a lot of other triggers. So, um, so that's that. Um, and then, and then we'll, we'll actually go through the a scenario again. You know, follow along. Um, in if you want to play along, um, certainly do that. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'll kind of discuss you know how the conversation would go with with uh, an audience or with with uh, uh, participants. Um, so uh, on the morning of September twenty second, manager at any tech notices that certain files and are not opening correctly, gives a call to help desk to get their assistance. Uh, throughout the morning, others at help desk received similar complaints of users receiving messages stating that uh, files stored on the network are unavailable, not found. Uh, complaints have been logged uh, from various apartments, but not determined to be widespread just yet. Um, after receiving multiple similar complaints uh, from various users throughout the day, help desk sends an email to the IT manager. Uh, unfortunately, the IT manager is tied up in meetings and does not receive the message until the next morning. So, so that's kind of where we're starting, right? So. Um, you know, just uh, you know, help desk kind of getting the general run of the mill calls from users, but you know, progressing throughout the day, there's just a few more people reporting it, right? But alarms aren't going off just yet. And at some point, they just kind of reach uh, kind of a, a, a general consensus that you know we should probably let our IT manager know, and that was it. So then, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so so now, <laughs> now as a as a facilitator, I would look at you know the the the, the, the participants and say. Um, what went wrong, <laughs> right? Or, or, or what are some some of the key points? Um, I'm sure you guys, you know, they they, they stick out like a sore thumb. They're they're intended to, but um, you know, we're we're looking at uh, lack of a escalation process to start. Um, you know, so I would say, okay, well, you know, as you're sitting there, go ahead and pull for your response button. What does it say about escalation? You know, should we be talking? Uh, you know, should we wait to a certain point? Um, uh, on volume of calls coming in or, um, the severity of, of, of what's occurring, um, um, like, like what, what people are reporting, um, is IT manager the first person that, you know, we should be escalating to. If the IT manager doesn't respond, we can just go home, come in the next day. So that certainly opens, uh, you know, some later on the after action report, some opportunity to, uh, train employees about, um, both escalations and internal internal communications, um, along with making sure they're actually documented. Again, if it's not documented, it does not exist. 
Um, so uh, we'll go to the next one. Uh, this is where we kind of pause and stop and say, okay, what are the known facts at this point? Because we can jump to a lot of conclusions. Um, and, and during the exercise, we don't want to do that. We always want to kind of like we gather information and we stop and think about, okay, what's, what's actually occurring? Um, so no facts. Intertech ID department is receiving complaints about certain network files being inaccessible. Um, this is where, um, you know, I, so I asked a couple of questions, um, you know, um, asking them, like, okay, well, according to our, our, um, our policy, is this a security incident or security brief at this point? Um, you know, again, we define security briefs as anything with PII. This doesn't necessarily suggest that at all, right? So, you know, we're not, we're not really pulling out the fire hose just yet to, 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 uh, uh, you know, address the problem. Um, you know, what, again, what's the trigger for notification? You can touch that, touch that on, on the last slide. Um, when the ID, IT department receives the initial escalation, it could be the IT manager, it could be system admins, it could be the, the security guys. Um, and then, uh, you know, how will this incident be categorized, um, in your plan? Um, and, you know, do you have enough information to connect the dots? And again, that goes back to, depending on, on what's occurring, you know, there's, there's a couple different paths that you can take. And that can be documented, let's say, in the, um, um, in, in like your playbook. Um, so, uh, going on, moving forward, uh, day two. Um, on September 23rd, which is the next day, the IT manager convenes a meeting with help desk to discuss what they're finding. Um, they have identified numerous files on, uh, their, uh, on Intertech systems that have had their extensions changed. And they have been unable to open or restore these files to the original format. Uh, IT manager sends an email to the system admins, uh, which is Marcia and, uh, Greg. Um, and follows uh, with a Zoom meeting to report current findings. Um, so, um, at this point, I would, I would, let's say if the system, assist admins were in the room, they were the target audience for this tabletop, I would say, okay, that means after hearing this, um, you know, what would you do next? Um, you know, like literally what, what step by step, what would you do to describe some of the things that you would investigate and troubleshoot at this time? Um, and then they'll say, okay, well, you know, we may start looking at the file servers, we may pull up an actual Users, um, uh, laptop to kind of take a look, maybe see what account has changed those files. There's like a, you know, local admin account. If it happens to be their account for any reason, if there's a program or process that was changing it. So they're investigating at this point. Um, I would also ask, and something that you guys can answer because I, I think it's interesting. Um, what are some of the possible options that can cause, uh, this symptom, um, on, on a network? Um, you know, aside from someone just going in and, and changing it. I mean, like, for instance, it could possibly be, you know, network share went down. So, you know, you have links to those shares, but when you click on it, you're, you're unavailable. Um, so that's some of the things that to think about and to start discussing with, uh, your part, your uh, participants. Um, uh, another question, um, what is, uh, what would be communicated, uh, to users at this point? So users are calling in, you know, left and right to help us and right and, and help us. You don't want them to, you jump a gun and say, oh yeah, we're being attacked or, you know, um, you know, all systems down, <laughs> you know, red, red, red alert. Uh, so it is very, very important on the communication aspect, uh, throughout the entire exercise, um, to, to determine what are you seeing to who and who's seeing it, um, and, and what information is being given out. So, you know, that facilitates some discussion, making sure that's all documented. Um, uh, and also, you know, I, I end up asking, you know, what, what kind of tools, resources, skill sets would have assisted you, at least up to this point in the investigation. So that's an opportunity to, to discover that. Um, all right. So, uh, uh, next to, on uh, day two of the investigation, um, in total, uh, the IT team has identified tens of thousands of files that have been affected this far, including files that contain information on individuals from over 15 states. Uh, impacted files include information relating to both Initex employees. As well as customer invoices, so security numbers, and sensitive uh, investment documents. Uh, because many files are inaccessible, uh, the legal team, the dev team, and customer support uh, aren't able to do their day to day work. Uh, the files continue uh, to become unavailable uh, throughout the day, affecting new users as, as it progresses. Um, so, you know, of course, you get a whole slew of new information about what we've you know, discovered and, 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 uh, and what's being affected. So, um, you know, questions that, you know, the facilitator would, would ask the participants is, all right, at this time, you know, what are the, you know, what, while there are symptoms of malicious activity, um, you know, have we actually found evidence of foul play? You know, maybe not. We just, we just found that, that there's files that contain various amounts of information 
Um, you know, you just can't get to them, right? Some can be corrupted, things can be replicated funny. Um, you know, who knows? Um, you know, and again, that, that's another, you know, uh, area of discussion is what can cause these symptoms. Um, uh, but what we do know is that this is causing a work stoppage. Um, so then, question, the open questions, what would you do next? So, um, and, and then, you know, we'll probably get a lot of white stairs, but that's important. You know, it's not, it's not that it's intentional, but like, as the, as the facilitator moderator, it's my, not my job to guide them through it. It's their opportunity to, to think about it, like, oh man, what would I do? Because if that was actually occurring, chances are they would sit there going, oh man, what would I do? <laughs> so, um, uh, with the, uh, information provided, um, you know, one of the things I, I did ask is if there's any new special considerations to account for, which in this case, um, the uh, discovery that there's some PII information that's being affected. Um, so again, that's going to be some triggers to involve different people, and different processes. Um, let me go down. Um, oops. Um, and I think one of the last things I touched on, and it, it is a component of uh, uh, the incident response uh, plan, if it is in your plan, is that we have um, someone designated as the incident response manager. You know, it could be probably the, the head of IT, it could be the head of security, it could be the uh, CTO, the CISO, it's whoever was appointed uh, to be the uh, incident response manager. And, and what they're largely responsible for um, is um, documented all the information that's coming in um, and being able to, to, to both communicate that back out to uh, the response team um, and uh, any kind of stakeholders. Um, so, you know, so I, so in this case, I did engage the incident response manager pick on him a little bit to, to kind of make sure that he knows what to do. Like in this case, you know, if he's documenting everything that's happening, he's like, well, where, where are you going to document it? Um, how, 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 how are you going to communicate that out internally to the team? What if those resources that we're going to communicate become unavailable because, you know, it looks like a network might be compromised. So, uh, so uh, some out-of-band considerations. Um, so, um, in working to resolve the problem, uh, Alice uh, locates the following file on the affected network server. I'm not going to read this verbatim, but if you kind of go through it, um, this looks a little Russian-y, ransomware-y type, type deal with a couple of, of threats that basically say, listen, you know, we, we have all your data, you know, we, we uh, uh, exfiltrated it all. If you don't pay us, um, you know, we're, we're going to start blasting you guys. You know, we start you know, releasing it, uh, give a call to you. FTC or Brian Krebs, you know, the, the whole nine, right? So this is kind of like the old crap moment. So back to stopping, thinking, what are the facts? Uh, ID, IT department has been made aware of a potential ransomware incident involving thousands of files. Um, so um, here I got a couple questions um, that, you know, uh, we would we would answer quite as a group. Um, uh, I mean, we can, Read some of those, um, but you know the the big question that I had for uh, the group is, you know, uh, how does this change things? Um, you know, if, if there's a trigger in our communication plan, you know, I haven't actually opened up the communication plan, take a look, make sure that they're familiar with it. Um, you know, again, you know, the goal that we had is is to um, validate the instant response plan processes that we had in place, uh, more so than you know the activities or um, our technical abilities to respond to the incidents. So, so again, that was a very focused objective that we had. It was our first tabletop. Um, and again, the question may be different depending on what you're trying to accomplish, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the, with the exercise. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on this one for a little bit because this is the one that, that we really, you know, I think, I think, you know, there's a two hour engagement and I think this is the one that we spend about 45 minutes on. So this, this really is the meat of it because now it's like, all right. Well, not now. Now what? Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll ask you. You know, you guys feel free to, to to respond or even just kind of think about it because this is an actual, real scenario with all the ransomware and everything else going on, the, the, the whole hospital thing, and um, you know, some of the uh, 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 yeah, it's just it's it's running rampant. Um, so, let's scroll down here. All right, so uh, we're, we're going up to the, uh, to the third question here is how, how, how would you, you know, begin to um, remediate and contain, um, you know, based on uh, what, what you know so far, which is in this case, I think they said that they, they found this ransomware on the server, so it's not just the end users. 
um, that, that are seeing this. It looks like, you know, once you have these servers, there's some implications that, that said that they probably could get some kind of admin access to it, um, or at least with an admin account to, 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 to do all this work. So if you were to, to begin remediating and containing, you know, what, what do you think just general things that you guys would, would try to do? Let's say you do not the containment part. I'll first start. I would say that's valid. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's very valid. Yep. And then, and then, you know, if they are, you know, how would you identify it? How would you, how would you, 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 you how would you stop them? Yeah, because when you store the file, you're going to start doing it. Yeah, it's redundant. You're just going to run into the same thing all over again. So, um, this is, so there's a couple of general ideas that we had. Um, again, um, we haven't never gone through it, but in discussion, you know, we, we may want to see what the account was that modified the file. And we can find that. And then go ahead and disable that account. So if it was an admin account, you can say, okay, well, this is the account that was making all these changes on it. Go ahead and disable that, right? Stop in there. Um, if, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, physical isolation, um, um, you know, if there, if, if users are remote, you can certainly, you know, disable, uh, VPNs, um, uh, 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 at the time, um, uh, any kind of segmentation with your network should be seg segmented to begin with, but you certainly could do that logically. Um, uh, again, to, 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 to prevent any further spread. Um, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. There's, there's, a lot, 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 there's a lot of good questions in here to, to, to kind of keep on it, but that's kind of where, where the, the meat of the conversation would, would fall on. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, discover some of the, 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 the new processes or skill sets that might be needed or tools that you don't have in order to discover, um, you know, what's going on on the uh, network. Um, so, uh, uh, we'll do, we'll go on day three, uh, shortly after an internal meeting on September 24th, 2020, uh, the incident response team decides to retain an outside forensics investigator to help with the uh, investigation. By the end of the day, uh, Initech has entered into a statement of work with Forensico, uh, for security cons uh, consulting services. Uh, Forensico arrives on site, is able to contain the spread of the malware, but not before it already encrypted thousands of files on the environment, uh, which can be restored from backup, but doing so would take uh, significant time and resources, which is always the case. Um, because of the volume of data uh, at, at issue and for this scenario, uh, the time of the, of the last successful backup is over three months old. So, yeah, I think that's right. Um, uh, otherwise, the ransom demand is 100 Bitcoin, which um, at the time was a million bucks. I think 100 Bitcoin is probably 1.4, 1.5 million, it's getting there. Um, forensic team has uh, seen this ransomware before and believes the attack emanates from a known cyber attack group related with the Russian government. Um, and then the last thing which we'll get, we're going to actually hit all these bullet points. Um, at the family dinner, um, at which he consumed several drinks, one of the members of the incident response team let it slip that an attack is being extorted for money bucks after a breach. So, um, this has a lot of fun ones in there. Um, What's in their communication? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, the, the, the first one, um, is as far as the, uh, incident response team, um, retaining an outside forensics investigator, uh, you know, it's not that, that that's not fine, but one of the things to consider is if you have something like cybersecurity insurance, um, because the, those insurance providers may mandate the use, or actually there's a couple of funds. They, they, they may mandate the use of one of their approved, um, uh, you know, forensic investigators or, you know, incident response guys that will handle something like this. Uh, the second thing is, um, they, they, they may per contract say, you know, as soon as something like this is identified, stop, contact legal, contact us. Like literally don't say a single thing to a single person. Don't call, you know, sled. Don't call, you know, anyone, right? You're basically just like, stop what you're doing. Give us a call. If you don't do that, you may actually be in breach of the contract and you are screwed. You will not get a penny. So, um, you know, that, that's something that, that, the reason why that bullet point is there is for that reason. Is to make sure if you do have something like sub or any other considerations, um, by not following a very directed process, um, that, that can really mess up the, your, the end result in, in terms of what it's going to cost you to remediate and get back to normal. Um, uh, the second one, I, I think this is kind of glaring <laughs> with, uh, your data backup process. Equally as important of doing, uh, a tabletop exercise is to, uh, test and validate your backups. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I think, I think we have a pretty good handle on that, but, um, it's not uncommon to see a scenario just like this and you scratch your head. Um, but probably more often than not, this is the position that people are in, or at least 
they're they're kind of ignorant to the fact that like they think they're backing up and they have everything and they go to try to restore it, then they get hit with the reality check. So um uh yep, yeah, and, and I'll skip the last one. Um again, that just goes back to you on a couple of fronts. Um you know, if, if, if something like that happens where somebody goes back home, you know, tells like, you know, like their wife who they confide in, but their you know, thirteen year old son hears about it and creates a Facebook group and then uh, man, yeah, 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 you better hope you have an excellent PR team. And, and that, again, Brian Krebs is going to be calling you the very next day. Um, all right, so this is where we, where, where we stop. Um, uh, on its own accord, uh, the um, uh, information security team has retained a forensics investigator to provide security consultant services. Ransom was made. Uh, the uh, forensics uh, team did contain the spread of malware, but files are still encrypted. So. Um, it's not spreading anymore. So that's good news. Uh, so what, what, what next? And again, this would be the question for the participants. It's like, okay, well, you know, it's not spreading anymore. That's the rules, but, you know, we, we, business has still come to a complete stop. So, um, you know, this, this opens up for, um, based on this scenario, because, you know, uh, on one side, you already entered into a statement of work with a forensics team, which brings upon, you know, some, some, not legal troubles, but you got to get your legal involved, talk to the cyber uh, insurance provider, and smooth things over on that on that front, if they can be. Um, but you still need to um, try to restore uh, the, uh, the the backups and get business back up and running. Do you mean like prioritize it and what needs to start restoring? Start hacking, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, absolutely. Um, so, and just to touch on, you know, the goal of the the forensic team is to identify collect, preserve, and analyze the data uh, in a way that it preserves the, um, the integrity and evidence collected so it can be used in a legal case. They are not the guys that come in and fix everything and leaves. So that's just, um, you know, I probably haven't worked with forensic investigators, but um, yeah, neither have I. <laughs> but uh, just, just the, the presumption is that, you know, these guys aren't the, the guys that will get you out of, out of hot water. It will just kind of, you know, stop it from burning so much. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and also I just put a note in forensics aren't the key holder and decrypter to the ransomware. So again, they're not going to, you know, restore your data for you. All right. Um, all right. Uh, after weighing its options on September 27th, uh, I think this is probably three, four, five days later. Um, and it's like, works with a Bitcoin broker, uh, secure. I don't know why I put 75 because it's a hundred, but, um, uh, to pay the ransom. Unfortunately, after the ransom is paid, the attackers go silent. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's never happened, huh? Um, on September 30th, after nine days offline, um, the Initex tech team aided by the forensic team is able to restore the encrypted system data. Forensic code says that it still cannot determine the underlying vector or vulnerability of this attack. And despite various, hey, there it is. Oh, yes. oh, right. so. Um, and despite uh, various remediation containment efforts, cannot guarantee that the attackers still do not have access to the network, which is something that Ben brought up. Um, and, and people are absolutely put in this position. Um, so, uh, no effects. Uh, you know, the company has paid the ransom. The attackers the attacker failed to follow through with the decryptor. Um, and Intertech has spent nine days down uh, before restoring um, the backups, so I mean that's a, it's 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 an incredible amount of downtime. Um, and something to point out here when looking at you put it in perspective, you know, somebody's asking these ransomware are 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 asking like a million dollars, you know, maybe uh, two million dollars when they come up, and you're like, yeah, that's a lot of money. But when you look at it, when you quantify it in terms of business downtime, you know, let's say you got like 500 employees that that you know average salary is 300 or 30 bucks an hour. And you multiply that per day, per hour, per week, um, along with the lost revenue, the impact of, of, of customers not, not being able to, you know, either buy your services or your products or what have you. Um, that, that number can severely, um, uh, outpace the million or two million dollars of ransom. That's why people pay, uh, because it is the best option. Um, so, you know, one of the things I asked is like, you know, how, how, how can this be quantified? Um, uh, what can be done to investigate the root cause since, again, the, um, the, the forensic team wasn't able to determine that. There's still a possibility that they use this on the network or the vulnerability or vectors still exist. So as soon as they leave, they'll come right back again or somebody else might. Uh, so that, that opens up to uh, some more conversations along with, um, 
you know, what, what steps can you take to prevent that from happening again? Um, all right, so this is kind of like wrapping up. Um, overall, um, you know, timing is difficult to manage. Early detection is key for shortening the timeline. Um, gray areas will factually and legally exist. Um, reasonable positions may be taken based on them. So again, even though you have these plans, these processes, procedures in place, everything's documented, you just can't, you simply can't just predict every scenario and every outcome. So, um, you know, there's a lot of times we're going to have to make decisions based on just what, it's also why we stop and you assess like, okay, what do we know for sure so far? Um, as far as the information security systems, um, you know, definitely understand when they'll get legal involved, especially when reaching a third parties or in this case, if it entails PII. Um, you know, especially, you know, another consideration is like there's some regulatory requirements in reporting. So, um, and, 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 and both, on, both based on the, the amount of PII exposed, um, and, and just, uh, maybe the industry that you're in, or just simply that PII was, was closed to begin with. Um, you may be legally obligated to report it to certain regulatory, uh, regulatory bodies. Uh, so that, that, that's, that's exponentially more important to know, uh, because you can get hit just as hard with that than the ransomware itself. Um, and then just the last point, uh, information is often lacking. You know, you, you have to go with what, what, what you're able to find. Uh, judgment calls supported by evidence is, and expertise is necessary. Um, so, you know, in this scenario that we went over, we ended with a lessons learned. Um, again, this is something that will go right into, this is kind of like the hot wash, um, that, that will eventually go into the after, after action report. We're asking the same questions. What worked? What didn't? How can the process be improved? Um, you know, throughout the exercise, you know, a lot of people may have had ideas or something that they wanted to say that didn't really fit into the scenario just so that this gives a really good opportunity to bring this up. Um, and, uh, and that's it. So, um, I'm going to loop that eventually. Um, have you guys take a look at some of these. I'll just pull them up right now. Um, because we're still doing pretty good on time. You guys think any questions so far? Yeah. No, actually, here's a better question. Have you guys ever participated in an actual tabletop exercise for your organization? I just yeah. run a couple of them for the hospital system. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, just uh, for, so I'm, I'm curious, how often did you do them? Uh, so, initially I was the, probably about the first one for the organization. And then after that, we had a vendor come in and do the next one. Mm -hmm. And then, Basically, they said, yeah, we want to go back to Eric's. Um, so the frequency started off as annually. We brought in the vendor to pick that up for the second year. After the end of that, we ended up making it uh, semi-annually. And uh, the big guys that I brought in is that the initial one, the first one, the first round that I did was just security team that encompasses key stakeholders from my team. Mm -hmm. That's where the the, basically, it's a response at two levels. You know, the IT plan, which is really your IT security facilitating what needs to take place in IT. Mm -hmm. And the secondary plan, which incorporated marketing, legal, uh, compliance, really your, your exterior systems that you need to be able to plug into. Yep. So it became once or, the biannual was security team, so really focused, still high level, but a little bit deeper on the technical stuff. The secondary scenario is still incorporated in the core team, but brought in into the scenario, legal, marketing, etc. And it played to that. Excellent. Yep. No, I, that's good because I, I mentioned the same thing in, just want to see if you said any, any difference. <laughs> um, now, did you say that after you brought in the external um, uh, person to do the tabletop, did it go back to doing the internal? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, uh, so, that, just again, curiosity, was there uh, a reason for that or was there uh, a big enough disparity on, on how they did it compared to you guys, because I, I, my intuition says that, that internally you can, you can really focus the tabletop specifically to your, your objectives, your needs, your concerns, et cetera, that it may not be, um, you know, as visible to somebody externally coming in. Yeah, and the external team attempted like the best they could as a third party to incorporate internal, so they have to like IP address space, those things like, we provided some data related mm -hmm. to our environment for them to work into theirs. It was not the same level to where it felt personal, like a scenario that was believed for two organizations. Mm -hmm. um, the other big difference is just more of a personal player for me. Dungeons and Dragons I worked in. Um, essentially, you know, all the, the efforts that you would take from an incident response 
don't always succeed the plans that you incorporate. Like, hey, I'm, I'm going to review the firewall logs, and I'm going to find the bad guy from those logs. Well, the logs might not have been there. There might be mm -hmm. a hard drive that went down. Or yeah. guess what? You were doing maintenance in that window on your Splunk instance, and it just didn't happen to have that that you were looking for. But you, you botched your role. So that's the scenario is played out in that regard. And it drove engagement because people really think, at first, they were like, man, at page 20, like, what are we doing here? <laughs> but you, you tee it up in the sense of, like, you bring, like, they drive the actions. And as the kind of scenario runner, I had kind of the different avenues you could take, mm -hmm. like areas of investigation process. And then they, they started liking when I would throw the card up and say, okay, well, you've stumbled across, you know, like this specific type of action. So let's see how we how that plays out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's... That was, we didn't get that from a third party, so they were, they kind of felt like, man, we really like the dynamicness of, you know, the home run. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, that's fantastic to hear. And for you guys who haven't done one, um, hopefully these will give you some resources so you can play into that same role. Um, it was, it was, it was very rewarding to do. Um, you know, I, I think having, uh, you know, being involved in putting together our first one, um, you know, there's definitely a sense of imposter syndrome where like, you know, this guy has no idea what he's doing. Um, but, yeah, but, but, you know, but we, we nailed it. And, and, and actually, you know, I, you know, mentioned the, the, the number one feedback. So I, you know, I sent a questionnaire out after along with taking all the info from both the hot wash or the, you know, the media, uh, 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 discussion afterwards, along with, um, you know, we did have a scribe that took on notes. Um, so I put all that into our executive, executive report. But some of the questions I sent out after, one of them, um, one of the responses, overwhelming response was that, um, um, that they just want to do this more often. Like, like, they, like, across the board, but it was so incredibly valuable. Which, you know, you kind of, you, you know, I, 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 I kind of like, you know, had, had the intuition that that would be the case, but actually going through it and people realizing like, oh man, like, you know, and, uh, you know, if this were to actually happen, you know, we may not be as prepared as we thought, or there's certain, Aspects of it that you know we we needed to hone in that we may have not identified ahead of time. Um, so so yeah, that was that was very rewarding. Um, I'll pull up. I'm not gonna like. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't have to pull these up. Just save them all. Um, just kind of give you. Um, and I'll, I'll send the links to this um, along with the with the slides. Um, but these are some of the uh, like this is an after action report. This came from uh, the uh, uh, HSDL, which I think is Homeland Security Digital Library. Um, this is, um, this is actually the exact one I used. Um, that was, um, is very, very simple. So a lot of these, this is, this is what I discovered when trying to find like a good format, um, along with some of the documents you put together, um, is that it's so disparate as far as what, what people are, have done, are doing. It's not that it's wrong either. It actually gives you the opportunity to really tailor this, just like Eric said for his, his, his company, uh, where, where it makes sense. So, um, you know, this after action report, you know, I, 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 I'm just has, this is like some kind of hazmat thing. Um, you know, I deleted all this, but I went and filled in all my information and what we did. Um, it was really, really, really easy to read. It was useful. So, um, uh, a, a bit of jeopardy for you guys. Who, who, who's the guy that said complexity is the enemy of security? Yeah, yeah everyone's heard it, but yeah. Everyone yeah. said it. Yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone said, it. actually, not, not that I asked, I, I can't remember the guy's name too. He's, he's like the, the big, uh, cryptology guy. He wrote, wrote all the books on him. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 Schneider. Yeah, so, so he said that. Um, that, that, that was his quote. And the, his complexity is the enemy of security. So, um, kind of to that point, I didn't want to, I mean, it probably looked like a rock star putting together like this dancer report and everything, but then it's like, who's going to read it? What are they going to get out of it? So, um, this was format, formatted really well. Uh, um, the ten pages. Yeah. Oh man, mine ended up being like three pages. Yeah. That's I, awesome. I, I, I turned, I, it's not single page. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I turned all this stuff off. But pictures. Yeah, yeah, there's pictures in there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Because it was, it was dumpsters on fire. Yeah, dumpsters on fire. Yeah, run. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, mine, mine got down to like three or four pages, but um, it's all in there, so you can actually follow that format. Um, the uh, incident response uh, management plan. Now, this is pretty big. This is 50 pages long. Um, and it, if you have or haven't heard of uh, FR Secure, it's um, uh, it's uh, uh, Sky Evan uh, that, that runs it. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a fan, and you know, I like his message, so this crossed my path. Um, he even says, you know, take this exact one, put your name on it, it's yours. Um, so if you don't have uh, an incident response plan, um, use this, you know, start with it, modify it. Um, this probably covers way more than what you need, but again, you could tailor it to, you know, your, your actual business needs. So it's, it's a fantastic plan. I haven't used it, we already have one in place, but um, I've, I've certainly gone back to this to, to help further develop ours. Um, so that's there, so that's a resource for you guys. Um, the MITRE Cyber Exercise Playbook. Uh, this is the one that, that will give you um, a list of some objectives that, that you can that you can pick and pull through, along with uh, the outcome, uh, excuse me, outcomes of, obje of objectives. Um, so it tells you what you're doing and then why you're doing it. Um, and again, this all plays into you know what 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 you want your what what you actually want to get out of it. Um, so definitely look through this. Yeah, here's some, some common exercise uh, objectives, like, you know, develop contingency plans for surviving loss of similar or all IT systems. Very valid. So then you develop your scenario based on, around that of, of objective. And that's communicated to your participants so they know, you know, what, what kind of frame to be thinking of and, and how to, you know, maybe improve that, that, that process or tools or skill sets out of there. Uh, and then further down, some, some outcomes. So again, you can match these up, limited resource for that. Um, this spe special publication, um, this is something I intend to read. Um, again, with the idea of, uh, you know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't want the tabletop to be, um, you know, too involved, too, too complex. Not that this makes it that, you know, be, be a person where everyone's wanting this. Um, but this really does have some good information on it. Um, I got the definition of a hot wash out of it, so yeah. it's useful to me. It's very much in your mind. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it just, you know, it, it's, it's, a uh, you know, one of the things, uh, going back to FR Secure, um, you know, what, one of, one of the things that he said that I resonate with is that, you know, um, part of why, you know, information security is broken is because we don't share a common language, which means, you know, what I'm doing at my job and my responsibilities and how I approach security is going to be different than yours, be different than next. There's no governing body that we often look back to and say, hey, this is how you do it correctly. And here's a common language that you can use. This kind of touches on it, certainly. Um, at least it's one of the, the wider spread ones that we can refer back to. Um, but that's in there. Uh, if you want to kind of go through it. Um, and, and that's it. Yeah, there's the tabletop. So that's, uh, that's all I got for you guys. Yeah, that's awesome. The, anyone thinking about like the D&D, Black Hills Security, who just attacked? Oh, they have a corporation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they did a podcast or one of their, their casts that is specific to like D&Difying your incident response. And I think that was probably the brainchild idea that led into backdoors and breaches. What's funny is he did that podcast, like I think two weeks after I did that scenario. I, was, I, I sent a message over to John, and I was like, dude, that's like, yeah, that's awesome. But he got a lot of the, the ideas. You keep it simple. So I mean, it's definitely fun. Keep the scope. The one note I did very much agree is you want to, from the scenario side, know the objective point of what your incident is looking to, to cast. From the, the hospital perspective, I wanted to make sure, like I always set, before I even cast what the scenario was, what the goal was, like what level of engagement am I looking to have from the various teams. So, like, hospital is very specific. You, patients, all supply, that type of risk. At what point when you're having, and this was the, the eye-opening I wanted to, everyone to kind of work through on that one scenario was at what point do you make a call that we need to stop using information systems because the risk of human life is too great and we need to implement the same measures that we do for a hurricane or like after a tornado and use those teams to bring up like tents and use because we have the protocols we have the emergency response systems but never once and there's even a, an individual in that healthcare system whose whole responsibility is the coordination of facility facilitating that making those decisions, but never was that relationship brokered between emergency facilitation and cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And that's like that was what one of those drills was for. And really on their side saying at what point you normally would make that call when tornadoes, you know, coming with you know hurricanes coming within X number of miles and it's this cat. And it brokered the conversation saying, hey, we actually need to meet on this probably more than once a year. To kind of qualify what type of cyber events, security related or just 
to the availability, mm -hmm. do you start enacting your plan? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Always interesting, and it's driven based off that idea of know your, your scope of your engagement of your, your scenario. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and, and you mentioned the, uh, the, the backwards and breaches. Of course, I brought that up and having not done an official tabletop exercise for our organization, that kind of looked a little, um, you know, we wanted something a little more official, but having gone through this one and then the idea of having smaller, maybe more directed with, let's say, like just the, you know, just the IT, core IT team to kind of go through those where without, you know, making like a big meeting, I mean, you can do it over lunch. So, um, so yeah, so I actually picked up the backwards and breaches and, and something that, you know, I'd like to kind of start playing around with, especially you know, in the frequency. Instead of doing this, like, this may be like a once a year by, by yearly kind of event where you pull in, um, you know, like, like I said, two core groups, your IT, then, you know, your executive suite includes, you know, like your, your legal and, and, um, human resources, you know, et cetera. Um, and then have the vector and breaches some, you know, more of a fun, engaging, uh, intermediary kind of tool to use to kind of, you know, keep the conversation going. So yeah, I think, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I haven't gone through the whole, uh, uh, the full game of, uh, uh, the backward and reaching just yet, but same thing I've been keeping an eye on, uh, John's, um, uh, 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 webcast and, and, and there's like, I think, um, there's a Discord for, uh, for, uh, the backward and reaches that you can kind of follow along with. So it's a, so it's a really fun resource and way to, to kind of start doing this, um, you know, kind of, um, I don't say unofficially, but, you know, without engaging, you know, your organization to set a time for it and kind of go through, you know, this extent of reporting as well. So. You said it's a lot of planning. Yeah, you yeah. The, with all the teams. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. Of planning. Yep, yep. That was a, that was, as, as a bigger, it's not that it was a bigger component, but it was a, it was a immediate consideration. Um, especially even as a core team, you know, where, you know, I didn't involve, you know, all of IT, all of evil, but driving all of IT all at once for two hours, um, is, is, is so, you know, it, you know, people are still calling in, people are solving problems, end users, you know, so we, we, we incorporate the help desk as well because, uh, the fact is even if they're not, um, they, they want to get their feet wet, uh, so much as far as the technical standpoint, they're the first line that, that's gathering this information, um, and, 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 you know, we need to discuss with them, like, how, how are they communicating back to users, what are they seeing, um, so, uh, yeah, so, so the time consideration was, was definitely a major component of planning. One thing I did on my side when I was kind of, because they didn't work with anything like this, is I couldn't loop all of IT. And I don't know that like the sub organization, the IT side scope, or what I had formalized and had all the managers kind of buy into was designating basically a security rep, like an instant response rep from each team. So networking team, server team, help desk. You, you can't skip them. Like you yeah. said, they're the front line on all yeah. the calls. You got ransomware, guess what's front and center on all the people and they're gonna go call them in like crazy. Yeah, you at least want your SMEs to be like queued in and ready. Right. To go. And desktop support is another big one because anything like they're your feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like whether you're like, hey, I need to pull an asset and bring it to us and forensic it mm -hmm. or anything else, like best you can, like do that if it makes sense for the organization, but you also wanna kinda of like when you hire someone for security. You know, that person that probably wants to bridge from their current wall into security, like look for stuff, because it's a great program in that sense, like enabling. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they participate, like they're the folks that are brought into like the small sessions. Like we have every other month, we would generally meet and just do cybersecurity stuff. I would try to, like we had even one of the guys come here for a little while, um, like he was a part of that. You know, so it's like you get them interested, show them what security is about, so people take to it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Out of curiosity, did any of the guiding documents talk about when or give guidance on when to engage like SLED or FBI? Um, or did they just leave it up to a legal organization? Yeah, well, so, um, you know, it's, I guess it's something that we can take a look at because, you know, we do got the one template here. I, I know, I know that, um, that that's a, it's a very addressable question. It's something that we've actually documented. Um, you know, from, oh, we'll, we'll take a look at it in this, but, um, uh, in comparison, you know, we know that, that, um, our insurance, it, it kind of guides us on what to do, um, because there are some ramifications on not following the process. Um, and, and just kind of off the cuff, I, I, I could have sworn I heard somewhere, read somewhere 
just to not engage <laughs> or uh, I like sledding or in, in anything uh, in general. But uh, what's that? Yeah, I, I I think so. Well, you know, I and I, I talk to sled all the time, but you have no control over what they decide to take. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a way that you can only not watch any pressure refusing at first. Yeah, I guess it's a weighted benefits thing. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, um, the, 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 it, it's, it's actually from the slide. It's, um, their critical infrastructure CIC. So. Yeah, so, you know, and, and, yeah, which by the way, not sign up to it. It's a really good resource, but you can kind of pick and choose a la carte what, um, what, what resources you want to utilize. Um, and the, the fact is that if needed, they can provide some of these, you know, vital resources to get your business back up and running. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't dismiss them engaging them at all. Um, but just kind of know the implications of, of, of doing so. Um, really good resource for information sharing as, as, as well. They, they've sent a ton of stuff recently on the, um, um, some, some major phishing campaigns going around along with, uh, the other one. Uh, I think it's related to the um, uh, the, the presidential um, uh, thing going on. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't think. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And uh, voter fraud. So, uh, really, really good information feed. But let's, um, out of curiosity, let's see if they address. Yeah, I was going to say that. You're probably going to call a slide. I'm going to think of the term that they would want. It'd just be yeah, like legal yeah. law enforcement. Yeah, in this document, I would expect that. It might not outline yeah, we'll who's the call, but it should outline who has the authority and the decision and owns the action of this call. That's so important. Yeah. So yeah, it's actually one of the the, the, the major um um uh, in the nice section on it. Yeah, yeah, a whole section on it. Yeah. So yeah. So it, they say they, they basically say that the first thing consult legal um with law enforcement. Yeah, so it, I, I, th I think it was probably the Sands or something else. It, it, their concern was, you know, once once you let law enforcement know, even even if they even they really will help help you, and it is still valuable. The problem is that information is longer in your hands, and right. you, can't, you can't control where it goes. So, um, you know, uh, so uh, that that's probably the argument. They, they, they may address that part right here. Probably, well, appropriately, the next one is public media hand, uh, handling. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, it actually does address that. I'm glad they put those sections there. I've seen some plans that are so, they deal with the technical aspects of the fitness talk, but they leave that communication with the, both internal and external. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if you decide you want to talk to a media representative from a policy perspective, there was nothing that was triggered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, the random thought. There's nothing that would be actually a cybersecurity issue. So, mm -hmm. ours actually would be communicating communication. Yeah. So we're required as soon as we contain the sales. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of companies they other they also have. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's it, it, before you came in, that, that's something that we kind of discussed and brought up in the scenario too is that you know that depending on the requirements from your insurance provider, you know, like um, uh, there's there, there may be mandated that as soon as a reportable incident, so let's say something from PII may be trigger, basically stop what you're doing, don't talk to a single person, contact legal, and which will get in contact with the insurance, and then um, you know you may be required to procure certain resources such as uh, your 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 forensics uh, through um, your insurance provider because they they got they got certain ones that they you know either work with or approve. That is, point is that that may be the case. So knowing that is important. So you don't, you know, preemptively, you know, start calling, you know, some forensics team here in Greenville to realize that that just made your entire insurance policy null and void and cost you personally, you know, a million, million bucks plus downtime. Yeah, yeah, it's just like saying, watch, yeah, it's probably, you know, they, they probably love to hear that, but you certainly warn them. So, um, having that documented and communicating that to, um, your incident response team is, is, is vitally important. Um, I'm just kind of curious to kind of see what other um, things it touch on. So, like this framework is something that, that we kind of follow. We have certain kind of guided steps that everyone, along with the playbook. So, depending on the, the type of uh, incident, you know, you can kind of have a couple uh, prescribed steps so that anyone can follow to make sure that you know, from one incident to the next, or from one scenario to the next, there's some expected outcomes. Make sure that nothing's missing. So, um, you know, we do have that. 
Um, it looks like they, they kind of go through all the phases uh, pretty well. Yeah, identifying containment. Oh, yeah, so they break it out. So that's nice. Yeah, yeah so this is very detailed. Again, I haven't gone through it completely because, you know, we, we have one that, that's pretty well written already. Um, but, you know, certainly, you know, I'll, I'll send you guys link. Uh, actually, all these links. This is a really good one, especially if you know that your company doesn't have one in place. Um, you know, put your name on this one, start using it. It covers everything. And you go through it, tell it to your particular company. Um, really, really good starting point. And a uh, complimentary resource that you should always have with this is kind of your critical contact of Paul Tree. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's in here as an appendix, other times it's a separate document because it requires changes a little more often. But those two typically go hand in hand, like your kind of your full stack up. Uh, when this references, it says, like, contact legal, here's how you contact legal. Yep. Here is the stakeholder that you should, that when you talk cybersecurity, they're not going to be like, yeah, yeah. Know, that should be a, a product of your scenarios. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, That's actually something that we did have. We had a second communication plan document that, depending on who you need to engage, it went in terms of, you know, uh, what are the triggers to engage in? Um, um, and then based on this scenario, you know, what are they communicating to various stakeholders? Who they need to contact? You know, so, um, um, all of our, um, I think it has a lot of names, numbers of, of all, you know, you know, stakeholders along with, um, you know, numbers to, um, you know, I, I think we may, may even have stuff on there just to have it on there. Um, but yeah, so there's no question when it comes time. You know, who to call, when to call them, et cetera, that's document. One thing I, so, I'm out of that space directly, but we used to have as part of our plan, and so we were, you know, brick and mortar, right? So we had procedures for like, establishing the, effectively a war room. Mm -hmm. Oh, changes things. So I would anticipate that the plan or an organization's plan should outline like, not just your communication protocols, but we would outline like what you can send over text, what you can uh, say over the phone, what must be said kind of in person or in a secure space. You need to update all those to reflect you know, the kind of environment we're working in now. And also, like, this team's appropriate. You know, yes. This team's cut the bill or do you need to use something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially, you know, if you're, if you're in a position where you have a threat actor on your network, you want to be using in-band communication to begin with. Exactly. So, um, yeah, yeah, those, those are excellent points to, 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 to address. So, to me, that's an evolution. We now have to take that into that level of account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the pandemic in general. Right. It's funny, I actually saw the next one down here by ourselves very nice way. It's a fun kind of virus. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, if I was now, it's a little bit more ambiguous. <laughs> a physical illness, not a computer virus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of neat. Like, they've actually done uh, a bit of, um, like, what, what, what could be in a, in a playbook. Uh, they, they have, like, scenarios like, it's like ransomware, slow credentials. You got some, uh, containment and, and investigate, or, um, containment and investigation strategies on it. Um, which is pretty cool, so. I thought that was interesting as an appendix. So ours was actually in the plan, you know, scenarios and then kind of, it, it works not either. Yeah, yeah. But calling them out, because you don't treat ransomware like they're going to treat, uh, denial service. Yeah. Denial service impacts. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. They're a great kiss to have. Even with high levels, you can be though, it's just that guidance. You should have a more kind of detailed playbook, a little bit closer to the people that are working in, like, the real deal, like, hand the Yeah, yeah. And the CISO goes viral with the XYZ. Here's why we're doing this. Yeah, so that's. Yeah, absolutely. That goes back to the, the whole, you know, if it's not written down, it, it doesn't exist. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, again, I'll, I'll send you guys uh, both the, the slides and uh, these resources. Um, again, it's it's not all encompassing, but it's certainly more than enough to cover our basis. And, and, and certainly for you guys who haven't done one, um, I mean, this is an excellent opportunity just to go up and say, you know, here's why we need one. Here's how we can do one. I can do it for you. Um, it, again, it's, it's extremely rewarding, like more valuable than you possibly imagine. Um, and, and certainly, you know, especially if you have 
you know, uh, some, some of the stakeholders, participants sitting on there with you, you're going to immediately identify that. So, um, you know, so, so it's, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun. So, um, you know, yeah, I, I think that's all I got. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.